All right, I'm back with another video. And so in this video here, we're going to touch on something a little different that I haven't touched on before. Now, I got a lot I could say about this subject, but I don't want to extend the video too long. But I got a lot of lot of information about this. But we're going to talk about parenting, disciplined children. We're going to talk about uh, children that are not getting along in a household. And we're going to talk about, you know, these children that want to live this street life. So if you want to hear what God says about it, stay tuned. All right. So here we go. Now. Let's talk about the parent and or the caregiver uh, of the child. All right. Whoever the guardian of the child is, who's ever raising a child. Kids go off track. But it's our job as the parents or the caregivers to get them back on track. All right. So what we have to do as the the one in control First off, we need to teach them the word of God. But before we can teach them the word of God, we need to be aware of what the word of God says ourselves. Now, Proverbs 22, verse 6 says this, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So we have to train up our children in the way they should go. And so when our children get off track, sometimes it's because the parents have been off track. All right. So we have to make sure that we on track because we have to be an example to our children or whoever we raising. We have to make sure that we are an example to them so that we can show them how we must be. So we got to be self-controlled, first of all. All right, we got to control our mouths. We got to watch the language we use. We got to watch the things that we do and say in front of our children. They need to see us living up to what we're trying to teach them or else they're going to resent you. They're going to be like, well, why are you telling me to do this and you not even doing it? And I heard parents say before, well, I'm grown. I could say this. I could do this. You not grown. You a child. That's not the way to do it, though. We don't tell children, well, I could say this, use this type of language because I'm an adult. Well, no, be an example. All right, be an example. Control yourself. And then we can try to control the children. Remember how Jesus talked about this Bible says you can't get a, I mean, a log out of your neighbor's eye and when you got a, a beam in your own eye. So first get the beam out your eye. So that way they can see, you can see clearly to instruct your children on getting the law I got there. All right. So thank God for that. So we do have to raise our children the way they should go. Now the Bible tells us, let me go over to Proverbs chapter 13. And this is the responsibility that God has given us. All right. As parents and caregivers. Proverbs 13, verse 24. He that spared his rod hated his son, but he that loved him chastened him be times. So in other words, what he's saying is that if you decide that you don't want to discipline your child, then it's like you hate them. It's like you love them less. You don't love them as much. Why? Because someone who loves their children, they disciplines their children. All right? So the same way God disciplines us. And so let me show you that. So look at uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12. And it says, For when the Lord loveth, he correct, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. So just like a father corrects his son that he loves and admires and delights in, God does the same thing. So God loves us, so he corrects us. So when we go back to Proverbs chapter uh, 13, uh, what's that 13? 
Yeah, and look at verse 24. Say, he that spared his rod hated his son. So you can't withheld discipline from your children. You can't withheld it. You have to give it to them if you love them. You're going to give it to them. Why? Because you want them to be on track. And that's the same way that God does us. He disciplined us. Why? Because he loves us. Now, also, there's another scripture in the book of Hebrews real quick. Let me run to that. Hebrews. Okay, Hebrews chapter 6. Let's look over at, well, Hebrews 12, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. It says, for whom the Lord loved, he chastened and scourged every son whom he received. So when God receives us, he, chast he chastises us. You know, he chastens us. Why? Because he loves you. All right. And God want to see us on track. Remember, the Bible said that God is, um, is not slack concerning his return, uh, but he is patient, you know. He is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. So we have to be long-suffering with our children. We have to discipline them because we don't want them to perish. We don't want them to fall victim to the system, locked up in jail, and we don't want them getting killed out here, all right? So we have to discipline our children. Now, also this, let me tell you this. Um, let's, talk, let's talk for a moment about... Um, well, you have to teach your, the children, of course, God's will, right? You got to teach them what the Lord says, and you also got to teach them about God's judgment, all right? Because you must implant in your children or who you raising God's will and God's judgment. And so let's talk about that for a moment. Let's look at um, Romans chapter one. And also, too, you can show your children this video or you could just give them these scriptures so that way they can um, actually just get them the scriptures. Give it to them. But if you want to share the video, that's cool too. But give them the scriptures when you're teaching them about what God says about things. See, Romans chapter 1. Let's start reading here verse 28 because there's something here about disobedient I want you to see. Romans 1 started 28. And even as they did not, did not like to retain God in their knowledge... And this could go for children. When you're trying to teach your children the word of God, if they don't want to retain God in their knowledge, tell them this. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And so let me pause there for a moment. Sometimes when you discipline your children, especially once they get over a certain age, like maybe they're high teens or uh, 17, then they even hit 18. I know people still you know, want to discipline your children, but it's going to come a point of time that when you're trying to discipline them, they won't listen. And especially as they come go into adulthood, they don't want to listen to you. They don't want to uh, receive your instruction. Just like God can give us up his children to a reprobate mind. You honestly have to give them up to a reprobate mind at some point, not when they're younger, but when they start getting older at some point, if they will not listen to you, no matter what instruction you're trying to give them, you eventually have to give them up because God gives us up. So we are not no different than God. God is more high and supreme than us. And if he'll give us up to a reprobate mind because we don't want to listen to him, then what makes us any different? So at some point when the children are older, they don't want to listen to you. You got to give them up. Yeah, we love them. We don't want nothing to happen to them. God loves us. Don't want nothing to happen to us. But if we will not retain God in our knowledge, then he'll give you up to that mind. And we ain't no different. We, we don't even compare to God. All right. So and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So God will give you up to do those things that you shouldn't be doing. He says, being filled with all unrighteousness. This is for the children too. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, uh, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God. Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. See, I want to show you. So even those that are disobedient to parents, God not going to force them to obey you. And if God not going to force them to obey you, 
at some point, you ain't going to be able to force them to obey you neither. And so also they says they are, verse 31, they are without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Now pay attention to this because this is the part which you really need to show them. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. See, they are worthy of death when they want to be disobedient to their parents. The Bible says they are worthy of death. So he says, not only do the same, but have pleasure in, in them that do them. So we got to understand that they are worthy of the death, but we want to save them from that. So we want to get them back on track. So we got to teach them what God says. Now let's look over at Ephesians chapter six. Because you got to give them these scriptures. All right, you got to teach them what God says. You got to try to instill some godly fear in them. All right, see, the Bible is taken out of the home. Look at the children today. You know, sometimes, yeah, kids do make their own decisions and parents do try. But like I said, you, that's when you give them up to a reprobate mind at some point when they get older, you know. But we still got to teach them what thus says the Lord. Now, you can still teach them when they get older. It, it don't mean you just give up on them because God don't just give up on us. Even though God may give us up to a reprobate mind, I believe God still, it's, at times he, hey, remember I said this, I still love you. I still, you know, I, I still want you to do right. I still want you to change. I still love you. I'm going to give you up because you decide that's what you want to do. But I want you to know I still love you and I want you to change. I want you to come back to me. And we do the same thing that God does. Still get at them. Even though they decide to do what they do, you still get at them. Hey, I still love you. Still my child. What you're doing not right. I want you to change because I don't want it to happen to you. I don't want you to end up going to jail or dead. I don't want you to end up in hell. But I love you. Come back. Do right. God does that to us. We do that to our children. All right. So Ephesians chapter six, let's read verse one to three. It says, children, tell them this, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. So you got to tell them, hey, you got to obey your parents because God say that's right. All right. He says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So let them know, hey, God, moral law, one of God's 10 commandments is that you Honor your father and your mother. All right. And that's the first commandment. And God going to held us to those commandments. All right. So verse three, he says, and tell them this too. He says that. So honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment will promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. So tell them, hey, things will go well with you if you honor your father and your mother. When we try to discipline you, you listen to us, you respect us, and you obey us. And God said that you may live long on the earth. So that tells me that if you want to be disobedient to your parents, you're not honoring them. That goes back to Romans that you are worthy of death. All right. So <clears throat> Paul says here that they may, that thou mayest live long on the earth. So what's the opposite of that? Disobedient, won't honor your father and mother. That sounds like your days could be shortened to me. All right. He says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well th with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. So if you're not honoring and you disobedient, you worthy of death. And so you may shorten your days. All right. So we got to let them know what the, uh, what God's judgment is. Okay. So now, for those who may not have a father in the home, let's talk about single women or women that's, uh, you may be a, a widow or you might just be a single mother. You know, you, you may not have the child's father in the house. So let's talk about that. All right. Cause you raising them alone. You know, you, you a woman, you trying to raise your children. Well, let's give an example with Paul, um, talk, um, uh, in um, the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5. Now, he was talking about widows, but understand what a widow is. A widow is one without a husband, all right? She had a husband, he died, all right? So this is the same thing with a single woman. You single, you by yourself, you don't have a man there, you don't have a husband there, the child's father is not there in the home, so you almost like a widow, all right? Almost like it. So Ephesians chapter 5, let's read starting in verse 4. It's the scripture says, uh, 
But if any widow have children or nephews or grandchildren, all right, uh, let them learn first to show pity at home. So teach them to show respect at their home, show pity at home and to requite their parents. In other words, repay your parents, you know, uh, for that is good and acceptable before God. So let them know that, hey, I know some people say, well, I didn't ask to be here. You made me. So you required to take care of me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They made you. You decide to make your children. You decide to take care of them. However, the children at some point when they get older, they should respect the fact that they had a parent there or parents there that was willing to raise them and take care of them and do right by them. So therefore, they should in some way pay you back by honoring you, by being there for you. OK, so, yeah, that's God's word. That's God's word. All right. And so. It's other scriptures that talk about those things similar to what people would try to get out of doing that. But we're not going to talk about that in this video. All right. So he says, uh, but if any have children or nephews, let them learn first to show pity at home. Teach them to respect their house and show pity for their household, for their parents. All right. And to requite their parents, repay their parents, you know, for that is good and acceptable for God. Let them know that God loves that. God accepts that and God considers that a good thing. All right. So now she that is a widow so or a single woman. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusted in God and continued in supplications and prayers night and day. So you woman or, or guy, father, that's a single parent to your child. You need to trust in God. You need to continue in your supplications and prayers to God night and day. You got to pray. All right? You got to pray for your children. You got to lift them up before the Lord in prayer and hope and pray that God have mercy and patience with them. All right. But look, but notice the parents that's not really doing that. They're not doing it, but they got something else in mind that they want to do. But she that living in pleasure is dead while she living. So she ain't, she not this woman that's crying out to God in supplications and prayers night and day, but she's living in pleasure. Hey, she's a widow. She out, she's single. She out there living in pleasure. And God says she dead while she live. You don't want to be that. So look at verse. Um, so yeah, let me see. Let's do what else I want to go to. Okay, here we go. So yeah, let's keep going. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So you worse than an unbeliever if you don't provide for your own, your children, whoever's in your household, if you're not taking care of them, feeding them the things they need in life, like God's word we talk about here, you are worse off than an unbeliever, than the infidel. You worse off in that. So you got to make sure that you parent, set your children down, teach them the word of God, and not by yelling and fussing at them. Um, you need to get your A over here and come read the Bible. You need to see, that's what's wrong with y'all little MLs now. You don't sit down and read God's word. You need to sit your little A down and read the word of God. Well, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> but remember, you got to be an example now. So you have to provide for your children. And right now we talking about providing them the word of God, teaching them the word of God, the will of God for children and the will of God, you know, as it pertains to, well, what God says about judgment all right, for those disobedient children. So now what we want to talk about now, I want to see something right here in um, Ephesians 6 verse 4. Same thing to the parents. This is, you got to be careful not to do this. Ephesians 6, 4 says, and ye fathers, or it could be mothers, whoever raising the children. It says, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So don't do things to purposely make your children mad. Don't do things like, you know, to irritate them. Don't irritate your children. Don't make them mad. Don't do things to provoke them to wrath. 
But what you should do is bring them up in a nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up as a, you being a woman or a man of God, teaching them to be concerned about the things of God as well. So teach them, be an example to them. Now, also, too, I want to say this. Just like God, we have to be the same way with our children or whoever we raising. God is patient with us. We must be patient with our children. God is forgiving to us. We got to forgive them. God is merciful to us. We got to be merciful to our children. God is slow to anger with us. And we also got to be slow to anger. Be quick to listen. Listen to them. Be so slow to speak. I know we the parents. We want to mouth off because we the adults. But a lot of times children want to talk. Let them talk. See what's on their mind. Ask them questions. Let them speak to you. Let them talk to you and be slow to anger. When they tell you something, don't be just so quick to be so angry. Listen to them. Hear them out. All right. You know, the a good way that a child will resent their parents is a parent that won't listen to them. So they feel like they can't even come to their own parent to talk to them because all you're going to do is be quick to get mad. You're going to want to hit them and you're going to curse them out and you're going to do things to them. And then now they don't trust you. And now they won't come to you for nothing because they can't talk to you. So you want to be a parent that can listen to your children. They can talk and have conversation with your children without just snapping off on them. So don't forget that. And so let's be an example to our children. Now, we'll get to part two on the next video.